Hey, welcome back. We've been talking through a forces unit for a physics and an AP physics course. We're going to be talking today about something called centripetal acceleration. And so in this lesson, I'm going to introduce the concept of how to approach these problems. And then I'm going to show you specifically how to do the two most common types of these problems in further screencasts. First, let's define some terms. Let's talk about some ideas here. So what you're looking at right now is an animation of my blender. And it moves so fast that you can't actually see it moving when it's in motion, but it is in motion. And we're concerned with the portion when it is spinning at a constant rate. We're not concerned today with when it speeds up or when it slows down. We're not concerned with the angular acceleration is what that's called. We're concerned with its constant rotation phase. We would call that uniform circular motion. Now, based on that, there is an acceleration involved that we need to talk more detail about. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so first of all, I do want you to take a look at this sequential set of images here. And let's just pick one point on the edge of the blade. This is our speed at a given point of time. This is our other speed or velocity at a given point in time. And as this rotates, that velocity changes. In fact, it's constantly changing. Let's think about why this is. Let me ask you some questions. So is the velocity of the point of the blade changing? And the answer is yeah, it's changing continuously. And we're not even talking about the speeding up or the slowing down phase. We're talking about just moving at a constant rotational rate its velocity is still changing because the velocity is changing directions continuously. All right, and so the next logical question we could ask is what do we call a change in velocity over a certain amount of time? That would be acceleration. And finally, is it possible that something is accelerating if it doesn't speed up but moves in a circular path? So what do you think? Okay, the answer is yes. Even if it's not speeding up or slowing down, if its velocity is constantly changing, that is a form of acceleration. This type of acceleration of circular motion-based acceleration is called centripetal acceleration. Centripetal literally means center-seeking. The reason for that is because the force, the force that causes centripetal acceleration and centripetal acceleration itself are both going to point towards the center of the circle. So I will show you why we know that to be true. All right, so let's take a look at that. So this is a proof using vector addition that delta V is towards the center. So remember delta, anything, is the final minus initial. And if you think back to vector addition from way back, earlier when we were talking about two-dimensional kinematics, if you were going to have a delta v could be rewritten as a addition of a negative v. If this is our second vector, our final vector, and we're going to add the negative of the first, how would we draw the negative of the initial velocity? Well, we would draw that in the opposite direction with the same magnitude. So literally vf plus a negative vi is going to look like this for this unit of time. And the sum, the vector sum of those two answers is going to be our change in velocity. And what direction does that vector sum point to? Well, it points to the center of the circle. We could do this at every point for this entire circle. And that acceleration would always point towards the center of the circle every time. So we do say the direction of centripetal acceleration is always, always, always towards the center of the circle. And therefore, the force that causes that centripetal acceleration must always point towards the center as well. All right, so just a couple of examples of this. This is our local merry-go-round here. And if there's a boy holding on to the merry-go-round here, it's a little hard to see because this is going to be in three dimensions here. But the velocity of his hands and his entire body at this point, if we're spinning in this direction is going to be that way at a tangent to the circle at that moment of time. Another way of saying that is if he let go, he would go flying off this way into the background, you could say. And there's a force that causes him to accelerate towards the middle. And that is a force applied by his hands, or you could say a force from the interaction of his hand and the bar. Looking at it from another point of view with another boy's hand, you could say, if this velocity right here is the tangential velocity, this hand is providing the force that causes this acceleration right here so that this boy can continue to move in a circular path. And there is always going to be an acceleration towards the center. So there has to be a net force that causes that acceleration towards the center. 
for something to move in a circular path. And if it's not there, if that force that causes circular acceleration stops, like one of the boys lets go of the bar, for instance, they will no longer move in a circle. They will continue to have the inertia they had before and move off the merry-go-round tangent to the circle. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of equations here. This is going to be our standard equation, and for most folks who are looking at this, this is what you're going to be using. So centripetal acceleration is this tangential speed. What do I mean by a tangent? I mean a line that intersects a circle at only one point, or an arc at only one point here. So this would be the tangential speed right here. This is another tangential speed over here, and that's going to be squared divided by the radius. So that's our centripetal acceleration. If you are in a rotational unit, then there is another way to work with centripetal acceleration. That's going to be the radius times the angular speed squared, omega squared. This is actually not a W. This is an omega, even though it looks very similar to a W. So if you're in a rotational unit, there's a lot more we could say about angular speed. That's the rate at which that angle changes, you could say. And I will formally get to this later, but I just wanted to throw it out here while we're talking about it. All right. So the next thing I want to say is that, again, I want to stress that there is a force that causes centripetal acceleration. It could be a force applied, like in the case of a boy holding on to a merry-go-round. That would be a force applied. Or a tension in a string. So hopefully you have good lab experiences in your physics class. And maybe your teacher is going to give you a lab where you're going to work with the tension in the string that causes this to move in a circular path. But the component of this tension that's pointing towards the center... That's what causes this thing to accelerate towards the center at any given time. So I'll do a screencast where I talk through the example where tension is providing the force that causes this thing to move in a circular path. And then I'll do another screencast where gravity is the force that causes this object, let's say this is the Earth, to move in a nearly circular path around the sun. Obviously, this is not the scale. Because those are going to be your two most common examples. So you could have a force applied that causes circular motion. You could have tension that causes circular motion. Or you could have gravitational force that causes circular motion. Those are by far your most common. All right, so we need to update the sum of our forces strategy. If you're not familiar with the sum of the forces, I'll put a link in the upper right. But it's a strategy that we're going to use. And if you take a look, this is exactly the same as what we had before. What I'm going to do is make any changes here in bold and show you what I'm talking about. So this is all stuff we've gone over before. But the idea with the sum of the forces strategy is you say the sum of the forces in one axis is equal to. And then you just add up, literally add up those forces in that axis. And then you say the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration in that axis. So that is Newton's second law. But now we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to call this centripetal acceleration because it is. In this example, we're assuming that we're working with an object that's moving in a circular path, right? And so if that's the case, whatever this plane is, we can call this centripetal acceleration. Well, what is centripetal acceleration in terms of our variable? That's going to be our tangential speed squared over r. And so what do you think we're going to do next? Well, we're going to take that and substitute it in. So now our second line is looking different than what it was before. And we can set the second line equal to this line over here to update our sum of our forces strategy. And we end up with this. The sum of the forces is equal to mass times V squared over R, where this is tangential speed over R. And so, like I said, I'm going to do two more screencasts where you can see this in action. One for tension, one for gravity. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments, let me know down below. And I hope you have a great day. Take care.